Hi, Scott Orland with Cinema Magazine. Think back to the year 1985. I know some of you weren't even born, but you had Reagan and Gorbachev in charge of the superpowers. You had the Berlin Wall separating East and West Germany. And there was a young filmmaker in Hollywood named John Hughes who was revolutionizing the way we see comedies. And one of those was The Breakfast Club. And here are two of the stars of the movie, Ali Sheedy and Molly Ringwald. 30 years. Mm. What immediately comes to mind when you think about the movie? When you think about filming the movie, I should say. Uh, a lot. I mean, it was it was filmed in the middle of winter. It's the only movie that I've done that was shot in sequence um, because it was basically one location, so it was possible to do that. Um, but it, you know, for me, it's like I was 16 years old, so it's it's a little bit like looking at baby pictures sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was one of the happiest experiences I've ever had filming anything. So it's a really good, it's a it's wonderful memories actually. And again, this is for Germany, but high school experiences, no matter where they are in the world, there's relatability factors. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about John is he did five archetypes mm -hmm. of what these different characterizations of at least American high school students were. Mm -hmm. How much of your character did you relate to? How much of that particular essence was set something that I kind of understand it? Everything for me. I, 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 everything. I mean, Allison, he let me make so much stuff up for Allison, but she, I understood her. And I did feel she's doing everything on the outside that I felt inside when I was in high school. Um, so that was, it was, it was so easy to play that part, yeah. I did not relate to my character, which is really the reason why I wanted to play that character. I mean, it was really much more uh, like my big sister, who was three and a half years older, was incredibly popular in school, mm -hmm. like, you know, voted best everything, you know? And, uh, and so it was, I thought it was intriguing for me to, to play that, that girl, and also to find I thought, in a lot of ways, Claire is really challenging to find the the, the sympathy mm -hmm. for her because because she is so privileged, you know, and she's also really honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she gets slammed for it, yeah. you know, yeah. for for saying, "I'm telling you the truth," you know, when she says we're probably not going to see each other yeah. on Monday. She's just being honest, and um, and she's sort of hated for it. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. So I didn't really relate to her. She wasn't. It wasn't my experience at all. But it was a. It was a really interesting character to play. One of the great things for actors is wardrobe. That they get to put on all different kind of costumes, and throughout the movie, their characters evolve. You had to wear the exact same thing for the entire shoot. Yes. What was that experience? It was like? such a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was, uh, well, I picked out my outfit. Um, I, John took me shopping, because the original outfit that was that was conceived of in Los Angeles showed up on set, and it was, it just didn't work. So John took me shopping, and I picked out all my clothes. And I loved it. I mean, I loved my wardrobe, but by the end of, what was it, three months mm -hmm. about? It was a pretty long shoot. Um, I, I never wanted to see it again. And I would give anything to have those boots now. But I mean, I would, I would have been happy at that time to just put everything on a bonfire. I was so sick of it. Yeah. I think we had like four, uh, four of everything, because of course everything has to be doubled and tripled in case anything happens to it. Um, I loved it. That was, I, I loved that outfit. It was a great. Love that outfit. Yeah. I would wear that today. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most iconic moments of the movie is the confessional when everybody's kind of just sitting around and opening up their heart and they all kind of have a commonality about their parents. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand correctly, you were both parents. Yes. So now, how do you look back on your, when your kids' teenage years and stuff? How surreal is that, that going, oh my God, I thought this about my parents and now I'm having to live it. Yeah. Well, I feel uh, when I watch it now, I definitely watch it uh, from, from a parent's point of view. And I can't help but think, oh, those poor parents. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure they were doing their best. Yeah. You know, who knows what's going on in their lives? We get a very specific point of view, which is the kid's point of view. And I also kind of realize that it's... I'm, I'm just going to go through that, you know, no matter what, no matter how hard I try, there's always going to be a moment where my kid's not going to like me, and that's just part of growing up. Yeah. You know, that's normal. Yeah. I, I'm always a little suspicious when, when, uh, when parents go, oh, my, my daughter's my best friend. And I'm like, no, she's your daughter. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I love to spend time with my kids, but they're not my best friends. They have their own best friend. And I was thinking too, this movie actually is almost timeless because if it was made today, 
almost all the essences would still be the same except for technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cell phones or yeah. all mm -hmm. that type of stuff that would be different. Right. Well, they would have to, in some way, uh, incorporate a way to get rid of the cell phones. No, because someone would have to take would, them away. You would have this, the, yeah. you know, the whole time. And, uh, You'd have to take them away, and Claire would have a backup one yes. in her bag. <laughs> of course. And, and you would have to figure out a way to, to get that on screen. I think people are kind of figuring that out now. You yeah. know, like in House of Cards, where you see the, the texts actually show up on yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um, but yeah, for sure, technology, that's like the one big difference, I think, of, of what's going on today is the technology. And let's speak of today. It's kind of wind the audience up because both of you have had really interesting careers. I mean, not only you're acting, but take a step away. Allie, you've written a couple of books. Mm -hmm. And now, Molly, you have a singing career. And, and she's written a couple she books. <laughs> Red books so can you talk a little bit about the elasticity of your career, of making sure that it wasn't just that one note, that what you wanted to expand upon with your creative outlets? Yeah, I, I think uh, I've always wanted to try a lot of different things. I've, I've n never been interested in just doing the same thing over and over again. So I feel like I feel very fortunate that I'm able to kind of go back and forth between theater and film and TV and music and literature and, you know, and that it all kind of, um, I, I don't know, I think it, it, for me it makes a very interesting, uh, interesting career. Yeah. I am, um, I love, I love acting. I love to work. Um, when I was raising my kid, because it was just the two of us, um, there was a certain time period where I just, I couldn't, I wasn't going to leave her. Um, so I, that was what I was doing. Um, and now she's in college and um, I'm, do, I'm working more, but I've also discovered that I really love teaching teenagers. So that's, um, I volunteer at, at a school for theater and the arts and I'm there almost, almost every single day. Just one last quick thing. I know you said you haven't been to Germany yet, but you have been. When I was little, I don't remember Any very much. What do you remember? I remember Munich was beautiful. I was there with my mom. She was there to work, and she took me um, with her for this for a short period one summer. And I just remember it was absolutely beautiful. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we get you back. I cannot thank you both enough. It is quite a trip down memory lane, and I just wish you guys the best. Thank, thank you. you. This is Scott Orland. Till next time.